You guys, the world is changing and it's changing fast. Do y'all ever think about the effect TikTok has on like mainstream culture? Cause look at this ad I just got. Put your head on my shoulder. Like that's a TikTok trend. We live in a world now where mainstream culture is dependent on TikTok trends, where venture capital firms are investing into memes. And literally the way people buy clothes is based on a For You page. That's right, I know you're wearing some trendy shit you saw on TikTok. Today's video is all about 2021 marketing trends. Now I know I'm late to this game. It's, what, what day is it? Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. What day is it? It is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Yeah, so I'm three months late on this shit, but a lot has changed in the creator economy landscape. So I thought this video would be better late than never. Before I dive into all the predictions I have, I first wanna go over the rise of the creator economy and explaining what has changed in the past year. Then I'll go explain my predictions that I think will affect creators, people going into the job market, maybe you're a student, teachers. I think that the trends and predictions I'm about to explain will change and affect everyone. And lastly, I'm going to roast my last year's video explaining my 2020 marketing trends to see if I'm ever accurate. All right, let's dive in. So I guess like to first start off with the craziness of the creator economy, I think the easiest way to explain the rise of the creator economy is just to define what the creator economy is. In my definition, I think the creator economy is ways creators make money. Like I literally think it's that simple. Let's just see the official definition. The official definition from Influencer Marketing Hub says, the creator economy consists of people performing their dream job. So it's essentially that you're making money out of what you love. A good example of the creator economy in action is the fact that Charlie D'Amelio, a 16 year old girl, has her own dunk donuts drink flavor what she has a following based on her dancing videos exactly 100 million followers on tiktok and it's all through herself her persona and her personality she's making a full-time income of it i'm pretty sure she's a millionaire and it's just insane how much money you can make from being yourself or even doing nothing like basically just posting thirst traps if you want to go that route. In a more positive light, I do think it's really fucking cool that these creators are making money out of just being themselves. Like Addison Rae launched a song and she's literally on Jimmy Fallon. Like this girl a year ago what, what, did not have followers. And now she's performing on national TV. She's a, like an A-list celebrity at this point. I don't, hey. I know you're gonna roast me for saying Edison's Ray is an A-list celebrity, but y'all, she has more reach than most of the Jenners, okay? Or the Kardashians, so don't at me. Essentially what I think is influencers, TikTokers, creators are just as valuable, if not more, than celebrities. And in terms of their reach, you know, corporations utilize influencers more days than traditional celebrities anyways. Another proof that the creator economy is rising is the fact that venture capital is heavily heavily focused on the creator economy. If you guys don't know, when companies wanna start, sometimes people raise money, sometimes in the millions and hundreds of millions. So a venture capital firm essentially is like the sugar daddy that it distributes money to founders. So <laughs> there's a couple of venture capital firms I kinda keep tabs on. One of them is Signal Fire that invests a lot in the creator economy. My friend Eric, who's the founder of Carrot, also launched a digital financing bank for creators. Like you have to re realize that they're creating a bank for creators, whereas five years ago, people would laugh at the word of like making money for creators because they didn't realize the money's there. Like brands and venture capitalists are throwing money at businesses and people trying to go after this creator economy. They wanna be with Addison Rae, they wanna be a part of this ecosystem and you can see this rise of creator economy really starting from the fact that consumers just like watching creators. I think the biggest shift ever is from regular TV to authentic media like YouTube and TikTok. They're the biggest shift I would say overall is more Gen Zers, including me, I'm, I'm Gen Z guys, okay? I know I'm turning 20 soon, but I am still Gen Z. <laughs> but I, I think the biggest shift is like, I don't watch Netflix and I don't really trust the opinions of celebrities. I trust people with maybe 10,000 followers or 100,000 that maybe look like me, sound like me, and they're more relatable. And I think that's the biggest thing. And you can see all the business people now, they see the cash cow, they're trying to get into the system. So this leads me to some of my predictions for or this year into next year. And I wanted to go over as a marketer or as a creator yourself, like you might be wondering what I should do to prepare myself for this next shift. So let's go into these predictions. So the first prediction I have is the rise of non-traditional education. I think that more and more people will look at this graph 
and be like, what the actual fuck? For those who don't know, I did not go to college. I did not finish my four years of high school either. For the sort of reasons of I couldn't afford it and I wanted to pursue other paths that didn't require a degree. I run a business and I do social media. So I just felt like if I wanted to go to school, I could always come back. And you know, there's statistics that show that Gen Z in this generation is in more student debt than ever. And it's because, you know, education is maintaining such a high cost in comparison to the job market not being as stable and reliant. And I think more and more people will be like, what the fuck? And um, you know, maybe just go other paths. Google is launching Google certificate. It's basically their own academy where they consider you, if you take a Google certificate degree, it's just as qualified as a college degree. And you're seeing more and more companies. There's a company called Oberlo. I, I ran a course with, um, you can check it out here. You know, I'm teaching marketing and this platform is enabling non-traditional education. So with abundance of resources from companies, YouTube, any platform, I I believe you don't really necessarily need a college degree. If you can afford it, that'd be great. But I think more and more people will just not feel forced to go to college and go their own path. The second prediction I have with the creator economy is creators not making money from social media anymore. Now, for those who think that's clickbait, you're kind of right. What I meant by creators not making money through platforms, I mean the ad revenue. So for those who don't know, content creators, Jake Paul, Charlie D'Amelio, anybody really makes money in three different ways. You can get paid through the platform. So YouTube or TikTok can send you a check for posting content. The second thing is through brand deals. And the third is merch or creator products. And I feel like you're going to see more and more creators really just focus on the third category, which is merch. Because the issue with ads and platforms paying you and being a brand deal person is because you have to almost exchange your creativity for a paycheck and you can kind of call this selling out but i think you're going to start to see more creators be like why do i have to you know change who i am for a brand deal make content that's safe so youtube can pay me more when i could just launch my own product to a community and make more money that way i think you see this naturally with mr beast launching his own restaurant called mr beast burgers you can see my friends colin and samir they're creators here on youtube they're creating their own membership and courses and you know personally for me i really am selective with the brand deals i take to the point where i would say most of my revenue comes from products I create and services I create with the community, which is my consulting and advertising. So I think that naturally you're going to see just see more creators say, fuck you AdSense and, and, and go to more decentralized ways to make money. And this will go into my next point. I think my prediction for not necessarily this year, but the next few years is the launch of social tokens. As creators realize that they can make money through creating products, you're going to start to see creators launching their own currency. I know this is bizarre. I know y'all are like, that's bullshit. Why would an influencer create their own money? But through the power of blockchain and cryptocurrencies, you can actually create your own token and each token, you can set a value to it. So for example, say your merch is 55 tokens, right? And you can exchange these 55 tokens for actual other currencies. So it's kind of like Chuck E. Cheese. Basically, I think creators will have their library of products and they're gonna use their own currency as the way of exchange. I'm actually speaking at a cryptocurrency conference. I'm doing some moderation and hosting, and I'm speaking with the founders of Rally. Rally is a way for creators to launch their own social tokens. So there's already platforms out there making it accessible for people to launch their own social tokens. So I know it's really crazy and out there, if you like a whole video about cryptocurrency and blockchain creators, I can do more about that. I will link below my video about NFTs for anyone who wants to learn more about that. All right. If you guys are so far enjoying this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. At the end of this video, I will react to some of my old predictions to see if I was wrong or if I was right. The fourth prediction I have is AI assistance. So there's a platform called Canva that I'm personally a huge fan of. They're a software to create graphics and they have so many templates. And it's so funny because I saw this meme the other day of like Canva taking... Hey, butt love. You want to say hi to me? Did you say hey, butt love? Hi! <laughs> I was just calling to tell Jade that I found her a boyfriend. Who? <laughs> you did? Yeah, he's perfect for you. Who? Okay, I'm gonna call you later, but thank you for the boyfriend recommendation. Bye. Bye. Like I was saying, so there's a platform called Canva that enables easy to make graphics. And there's this meme going around where it's like, oh, Canva's taking away all graphic designers' jobs. You know, with the rise of automation, software tools, it is scary how platforms are literally replacing 
graphic designers. You know, you don't really need a graphic designer. You can just use a Canva template to create your work. But I don't necessarily think this is fully true. I think that what's going to happen is software technology and AI is not going to replace jobs. It's going to accelerate jobs. It's going to be an assistance. I personally know startups and companies that use graphic designers to use Canva so it speeds up the process, but they still need a graphic designer. And this goes with the same way with, you know, creative roles. Like just because automation is doing tasks, it doesn't take away from the role. You know, jobs and companies still need people that are experts in that field to run the automation. Automation. <laughs> what was that? You know, you can take my media agency, for example. So, you know, my brand managers, we reach out to brands and, you know, we don't do it manually. We use a robot called Rocket Reach that will automate and find contacts. So it's not taking away from the job, but accelerating it and making it more efficient. And I think more and more students especially need to get comfortable with using software in AI, not in a bad way, but to accelerate jobs. Now, I know there's certain jobs that genuinely will be taken over by robots, but there's still a ton of creative jobs that, you know, help you work aside Sophia the robot. You know, you don't have to compete with them. Sophia the robot is just chilling with you. So I don't think we should be afraid of automation. I know there's some legitimate jobs that will be automated, like driving, but for the most part, creative roles, I would say, are safe for now. All right, my next prediction is number five, creators using TikTok and YouTube shorts as A-B testing. So for the longest time, I personally make 10 minute YouTube videos. Now with the rise of short form video, I make 15 to 60 second content. And I see me, honestly liking making shorter content because A, it's easier. Like I only spend five minutes making a TikTok versus like 20 hours for this YouTube video that barely gets any views. And I just, <laughs> anyways, I'm joking. But I think that short form content is easier and there's more instant gratification for the sole reason of it's just shorter. And I think more and more content creators will see this, especially, you know, long form creators will see this and be like, why am I spending so long when I could just be spending a shorter amount of time for the same result or same amount of views? So what I'm trying to say is I don't think people will quit making 10 minute YouTube videos. I feel like more and more people will use 15, 60 second, you know, short form videos to A-B test concepts to then decide whether we should take it to the longer form content. So, you know, in my personal social media strategy, I'm making a ton of Instagram reels, I'm making a ton of TikToks, and the top performing videos I will recreate in a longer form format. This enables me to save more time, work on videos that I know will have higher outcomes, and I personally just have fun on short form video, and I fucking spend way too much time on TikTok. So I think that more and more creators will do this, and it's the reason why I think Charlie D'Amelio still has a YouTube channel, still has long form content, but uses TikTok to almost A-B test concepts, or for her, just get her name out there. So if you aren't on TikTok or Reels already, what are you doing? I I'm on a ton of Clubhouse calls where the main excuse of people saying I'm not on TikTok is because it's for kids, but literally my mom and dad are on that app. So if you're not on TikTok, get your ass over there. All right, we're almost to the end of this video. You guys are flying through. Let me know if you are, again, so far enjoying this video. I need a lot of validation, okay? My next prediction is creators going from short brand deals to longer term brand deals. I think that I made a statement that brand deals are not gonna be as lucrative for creators. So the only way for brands to incentivize creators to work with them, I think will be longer term contracts. So, you know, personally for me, I'm working on a few one year contracts with brands I genuinely enjoy, but this is a brand new conversation to me. I did not have these deals approach me till like this year. So I just think that, you know, if you are a creator, if you are someone working with brands one off, definitely think about ways to extend that relationship to a year or six months or whatever that looks like, because A, it's a little bit better for you to not hop from brand deal to brand deal and your audience enjoys that more. And B, I think that the brand appreciates it more just because marketing takes a few times before things work. So by having a long-term relationship with a brand, I think it will give them more ROI as well. This is something that was just on my heart that I wanted to bring up. I think my next prediction is the rise of people that have been in the shadows. And what I mean by that is, you know, people of color, women, people that are in minorities, Asian communities, indigenous communities. I think that, you know, 2020 and even 2021 has taught me so much of the, the problems in this world and communities that are underrepresented. And I've just been seeing so many alliances come to form. There's this Asian American Women's Alliance of business owners and Asian creators that are coming together and raising money for causes. And I think they're raising like $100,000. And I also see obviously the, with the Black Lives Movement, just such a unity in 
problem solving. And I genuinely believe that I think that there's going to be more, not just companies, but organizations and communities that arise on people's setbacks. You know, I'm Asian American. I thought that being Asian was weird. I thought being a woman in business was bad. And I think that it's going to be a strength in the next few years. So, if, you know, if you are someone watching this video and you feel like you're too young or you don't look the same like everyone else, I think that's a massive, massive strength. And even if you're someone that does look like everybody, I don't think that's wrong either. I just think that in the next few years, we're going to see no excuses become an excuse. If you want to start a business, you want to be a social media creator. I feel like the, the world or the universe or whatever genuinely wants to give people platforms that look different. And I think this is just a great thing because, you know, personally for me and my company, I'm starting to work on more civic based projects. And, you know, personally for me, I was working on a Biden Harris campaign with a grassroots organizer last year. And I just feel like more and more people want to use what they fucking hate about themselves or just feel like this is a setback into a good thing. Same with sustainability. You know, that's something that I, I mentioned last year, I think is going to be a huge trend. And I think more and more people will just care about the environment. So if those things align with you, I think that you're going to be in good shape and you should definitely don't feel like you're an outcast based on your race, gender. You know, I didn't even mention the LGBTQ plus community, which is a huge thing. Latinx, like I just don't think anything will stop anybody. Now, people will still treat you differently on the way you look, but I almost feel like there's a sense of, you know, responsibility from people to minimize that. And especially from all these social movements. All right. So my last prediction, you know, obviously companies are diving into the creator economy. I know a lot of venture capital firms that are literally only investing into financial tech, creator economy. That's basically it. I'm super interested in the next step. You know, I think 2021 and 2020 just was mostly a year of creator economy growth. I personally think there's two ways that I think this can go. In the next few years, I think that animation will be the next Disney and more and more companies will invest in animator creators. I'm a little bit biased. I have a media agency where we work with creators on business development and we're working with some of the top TikTok animators in the world, which is super fun. But that's because I genuinely believe in them. Like I genuinely believe that, you know, Disney and Pixar have enabled cartoons in my childhood. And I think the next cartoons will come from creators and influencers and artists. I think that that's one area I feel like we still haven't tapped into. Like I think Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Rae and all these people tapped, you know, mainstream dance and they're, you know, they have merch lines, but I haven't seen this done yet within like the TikTok animation community. So I think the next year, the next Disney will come through TikTok animators or YouTube animators. And there's still a ton of animation communities, but I feel like this is a market that's going to be growing super fast. And with that being said, I think that more and more artists will finally be able to make money at what they love to do. Like, I think at the end of the day, what I'm super excited about in the next year or so is this rise of, first of all, inclusivity, but also this rise of like, you can literally make money out of doing it whatever the fuck you want. You can make money out of being an artist, an animator. You can make money, you know, making videos and talking to a camera at 6 p.m. at night when you could be just be hanging out with friends. Like, I think that it's incredible that the creator economy enables careers out of passion. Like, that's literally what it is. And it's pretty cheesy, but I'm fucking hyped and I'm super excited that my company me and my communities with you guys are in this together. So, you know, comment below your thoughts if you have any questions. And we're going to go on to the last portion of this video where I react to some of my old predictions from last year. But this is just a sign for anybody watching this to do whatever makes you happy because it's going to be okay. And I really do believe that it will work out. All right, psych! I'm not going to actually react to my videos. I'm going to react to it perhaps on a live stream for the sole reason of we're out of time. So if you guys like this video, <laughs> please give this video a like so I can do more of these videos and I can also react to my last year's predictions to see if I was right or wrong, okay? I promise I'll do it. Just let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so fucking much. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I love you guys. Stream influencer. Check it out right here. Start with the lighting's weird. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.